who are now tuned in to BFTV Buffalo Fanatics. Let's go. I wish I Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, ready to serve you with a new video, and it's a cool concept. I was on Twitter today, and I noticed a few things going around and circulating, and I said, you know what? Let me do a Bills version, and I don't even know what to call this. This, is, I guess this is the breakout, needs to step his game up, the whole categories of certain things players need to do this year, and I'm about to do the Bills version. Let me know if you guys like this one, and let me know if you guys agree, because there might be something that you might say, you know what, Rico, you bang on. Like I always am, I like to think so. But, there's sometimes I'm tripping. So I think I might be onto something here, but y'all let me know. Without further ado, let me jump into this bitch right this second. Breakout player of the year. Who on this Bills squad is going to break out? There, there are some names. I, I had to go through this list. Because I, I, there was a few people I was like, oh, that guy could break out. That guy could break out. But there's one guy, in my opinion, if he breaks out, we have a successful year. And that is my man Charles Big Play Clay. We brought that man in on a big deal, right? You would pay him handsomely. And he was brought in to stretch the field to be our bell cow down the middle, right? To be that mismatch guy. And I believe he still is, but he's been marred by some injuries. Now, here's why I believe he's going to be the breakout player of the year. There's a little bit of a reunion happening. Reunited and it feels so good. You know what I'm talking about is Brian Dable and my man, Charles Clay. If you guys don't remember, they have been together before. Remember when he was in Miami? Guess who was his coach when he had his breakout year? 759 yards, 69 receptions, six touchdowns. My man had 10 catches that year of over 20 yards. That's not all. He is reunited with a coach that knows how to use mismatches. He's known for that. So look for my man Charles Clay to have a breakout year under new OC Brian Dable. Comeback player. It's the comeback kid. Who on this team is going to be the comeback kid? It took me a minute to kind of figure things out. Because I'm like, are you coming back from injury? Are you coming back from a horrible season? How am I going to categorize this topic? And I thought to myself, you know what? In my opinion, looking through the roster, the one guy that needs to come back and let people know his name is Trent Murphy. Trent Murphy needs to come back off of that knee injury. If he comes back and gives us a performance that he gave us 2016, we have won this deal. Nine sacks, three forced fumbles from an edge rusher. We could definitely use that. So if Trent Murphy comes back to form, he is my comeback kid for this year's season. Rising star. Who is going to be the rising star on the Bills this year? And that's an easy one. The guy that got robbed for rookie of the year. Trey White. Tredavious White. Look for Tredavious White to not go through that sophomore slump. You know, the one that the one player that had a strong, promising rookie year and the next year <laughs> knows that. I don't see a nose dive. I see my man hungry as hell, talking that ish, and doing what he's got to do. Listen, four interceptions, 18 batted balls down, 69 tackles. Look for my man to have a huge year for Tredavious White to be my rising star. Now, there's always a player on every team from baseball to the NFL to the NBA that, you know what I mean, he came into the league and you're like, all right, I see some things, and then they kind of fall off. And then you forget about him. I'm here to remind you not to forget about this individual, and that is John Miller. Don't forget about John Miller. John Miller, this offseason, has rededicated himself to his body. If you guys haven't been following Buffalo Fanatics on IG, Kroon Photos, my man Kroon Photos, uh, has been working out with these guys and taking photos and, and following these guys all over the place. Shout out to my man Kroon Photos. Uh, yo, if you guys have been living on the rock, John Miller is ready to regain his position at right guard and he ain't playing game. So look for John Miller to step up, regain his position at right guard, solidify himself to show us why we took him from Louisville in the third round and make things happen. So John Miller, we ain't forgetting about you, but don't make us forget about you. Do what you're here to do and play ball. Now this topic here was the biggest one for me. I wasn't sure who to put. This was, a, this was almost gonna be a two piece, right? But the one person that stood out to me, uh, it, it, this needed to go to this person right here. And this topic is that needs to rebound. Who on this team needs to rebound? I mean, shit. 
The whole team needs to rebound. Who on the offense would you say needs to rebound? Let me tell you right now. Zay Jones. Zay! Step your game up, baby. You know what I mean? I know you went through the offseason. You've been going through some things. You busted up your knee. You you popped some whatever you whatever you popped. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you were, you know what I mean, smoking on that loud. I don't know. But my man needs to rebound like he's never rebounded before. You know what I'm saying? Having a 36% catch rate is not good. If you guys think that's good, that is not. I'm throwing you the ball three times, you're only catching it once. Do you think I'm going to go to you again? You know what I'm saying? So 36% catch rate, the amount of drops my man had, I'm not even going to get into that. 27 receptions, 317 yards. Now, it is all, it's not all doom and gloom. We drafted you in the second round, so there is potential for Zay Jones to become the player we wanted him to be. But he's got to dedicate himself to that jug machine, man. That Those drops are crucial. And I'm telling you right now, this is not the NBA. This is not MLB. These contracts are not guaranteed. So these guys are as hungry as ever. Guys that are at your bits, your Jeremy Curleys, your Robert Fosters, your Ray Ray McClouds, your Rod Streeters. You think they're going to sit there and say, you know what? Uh, I'll relinquish that number two spot. I'm not going to go for that. I'm just going to stick to three and four. Now, nah, they're going for that spot, Zay Jones. So you, my man, need to rebound like you've never rebounded before. You know what I'm saying? And get back on that field and show us exactly why we drafted you, son. She Under the radar. Under the radar. There's a few guys that could have been under the radar, but I think the one guy that stands out to me the most is Jeremy Curley. Jeremy Curley. I mean, shoot, when's the last time we had a nice slot receiver that we could say, you know, we could depend on him. What, Josh Reed? You know what I'm saying? Jeremy Curley coming in with the Bills was a great signing, an underrated signing. And this guy is going to be my under radar guy because he is going to stretch the field down the middle. He is going to look for the sticks and get the first down. That is what we're going to need with this offense going forward. So Jeremy Curley, look for that man to make some noise. He's going to be under the radar. Nobody's going to be talking about him, but he's got that third receiver spot locked down. If Zay Jones gets his act together, takes the number two receiver spot, Jeremy Curley is going to settle nicely in the slot position. Jeremy Curley is no slouch. If you guys don't know about Jeremy Curley, he is not a slouch. The 2016-2017 season playing for the 49ers. Decent numbers. His best year was in 2012. 827 yards. 14.8 yards average per catch. That is why we brought him in. Look for the sticks and stretch that field. Make them respect our receivers everybody wants to talk about how bad our receivers are i'm not worried one bit we will do what we must do to move the sticks and get in the end zone last but not least the dark horse mvp now key word is dark horse not the guy that you know is going to be the mvp you know what i mean ah, it's the dark horse the guy that nobody knows is going to be the mvp the guy that nobody's paying attention to and my dark horse mvp is nate Peterman, but you guys are thinking, yo, Rico, shut your ass up. All you want to do is talk about Nate. It's the Dark Horse MVP. Now, let me, let me explain myself. If he comes in and wins the job outright from Josh Allen, and we have success, and we make the playoffs again, we all know the defense is going to come out and play. But the man with the ball in his hand has got the master plan. Ooh, that, that was right. So look for my man, Nate Peterman, to have confidence this year, going into his second year, knowing that the odds are stacked against him. He's got to beat out the hot rookie that everybody's talking about, how good he looks in shorts. Pause. You feel me? And he's got to fight off Agent McCarron, you know what I'm saying, on his, on his other side. He knows what's at stake. He knows the coaches have confidence in him. They bench Tyrod for him. He knows what he has to do. He will lead this team to back to the playoffs. My man, Nate Peterman, the Dark Horse MVP. I want you guys to comment in the comment section. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. If you guys like my calls, if you have a better set of who deserves to be in what slot, please post them in the comment section. If you guys appreciate this video, you guys know what to do. Click that like button and click that notification button to know exactly when Buffalo Fanatics is hitting you up your phone. Am I off my rocker? Am I talking that shit or am I bang on? Let me know. Comment below. Let me know how you guys feel. Is my list out of whack? Is it right on point? I look forward to looking in the comment section. Real Rico underscore BF on Twitter. It's your boy. And I'm gone. Bitch, I